Example 4.7 or 5.7 for the given textbooks. For details, please see the description below. In this example, there is air at 300 Kelvin and 200 kilopascals, which is heated at a constant pressure to until it reaches a temperature of 600 Kelvin. We need to determine the change in internal energy of the air per unit mass using three different techniques. The first one is to use the table A17. The second one is to use the functional form of the specific heat, which is in table A2C. And then the last one is to find the average of the specific heat uh, using table A2B. The first choice to calculate the internal energy change is to use table A17, which provides the ideal gas properties for air. We look at the value for internal energy at 300 Kelvin. We see that this value is equal to four. Uh, 2.14.07 and we see the value for 600 Kelvin which gives us 4.34.78. Uh, From table A17 we were able to find the values for the specific internal energy. In order to find the value of the internal energy, the change of it, we simply do U2 minus U1 and that uh, difference is going to give us 220.71 kilojoules per kilogram. Table A2C provides us the coefficient in order to find the specific heat at constant pressure in a molar basis. That is given by a third degree polynomial equal to A plus BT plus CT squared plus DT to the third. This specific uh, heat at constant pressure is related to the specific heat at constant volume by this relationship. So P bar is equal to CV bar plus the universal gas constant. Our goal is to be able to find CV bar, which is the one related to the internal energy. We are able to find that the change of internal energy uh, in a molar base is equal to the integral from 1 to 2 of the change in CV as a function of temperature. From this relationship we find that CV bar is simply CP minus um, RU. Therefore this integral becomes simply the integral of CP bar minus RU dt. And if we take the integral of this um, polynomial, we find that the value of uh, u bar is simply going to be a t plus b t squared divided by 2 plus c t 3 divided by 3 plus d t 4 divided by 4 minus r u uh, t. And this is evaluated from T1 to T2. Now we go to the table A2C to find the values from A, B, C, and D. For air, we see that those values correspond for A is equal to 28.11. For B is equal to 0 0.1967 times 10 to the negative 2. For C, we find that it's 0.4802 times 10 to the negative 5. And for D, we find that it's negative 1.966 times 10 to the negative 9. If we now substitute the four different coefficients found in table A to C and the value of RU, which is given to be 8.31447 kilojoules kilomoles Kelvin, we find that the change of internal energy molar base is going to be equal to 6,447.01 and this is kilojoules uh, kilomoles. Now we need to convert the internal energy uh, in instead of uh, molar base into uh, per unit mass. In order to do that we use the relationship delta U is equal to delta U molar base divided by the molecular weight. The molecular weight of air is given to be 28.97 kilojoules kilograms per kilomoles. Therefore, the change of the internal energy, for this case, per unit 
mass is going to be equal to 222.5 kilojoules per kilogram. The last step is to find the change in internal energy per unit mass using the average specific heat values from table A to B. For that, we find the average value of the temperatures between 300 Kelvin and 600 Kelvin, which gives us a 450 Kelvin. From there, you can see that the value of uh, CV, which is the value related to internal energy, is equal to 0.733 kilojoules kilogram Kelvin. Using the value found in table A to B, we find that the change of internal energy is equal to CV in the average temperature and the difference between the two temperatures, T2 minus T1. And if we substitute the two values, we find that the delta uh, of internal energy is equal to 220 point kilo, uh, point zero ki uh, kilojoules per kilogram. If we could compare the results, um, step one, which is the data from the air tables, is the exact solution. If we see at the results of the second step, we see that there is a 0.8% difference. And also in step three, we see that there is a 0.4% difference, which shows that the approximations are a very good relationship with the exact solution.